This is the VoltMe 3 port GAN charger. This charger has a max output of 140 watts. It was a CES Innovations Awards honoree for 2023. In this video, I'm going to tell you if it's any good and tell you why you would even need such a powerful adapter. Let's get into it. GAN or gallium nitrate chargers have been gaining popularity for their compact size and impressive charging capabilities. Now more devices are moving to USB-C to power or recharge their batteries, but unfortunately most of those devices don't come with power adapters or they ship with underpowered adapters that are lower than the maximum capabilities, charging capabilities of the devices themselves. My name is Patrick and this is Everyday Tech, Everyday Tech for Everyday People. And today we're taking a look at this very powerful, very compact USB adapter from VoltMe. Now, full disclosure, VoltMe did reach out to me and ask me if I wanted to review this product. They did send this to me for free. They're not reviewing this video before it goes up. All my opinions are my own. A little while ago, I did a video on some inexpensive chargers. Now you can check out that video here or in the description below. Now those chargers I reviewed were 65 watt chargers. This charger here more than doubles the output at 140 watts. But let's take a look at this charger and I'll put, it's a very compact charger and I'll put the uh, measurements, uh, the dimensions on the screen now. It weighs in around 10.2 ounces. Now if we compare this to Apple's 140 watt adapter, we can see that Apple's adapter is significantly bigger and a little bit heavier. Not only is it significantly bigger, it only has one USB-C port. Even the 96 watt adapter from Apple is significantly bigger as well. It has a two prong design uh, with that, that folds up for a very compact design. Now, if we compare this to the 65 watt charger, we can see this is definitely bigger. And then if we compare this to the 30 watt charger that the, my M1 MacBook Air came with, it's definitely bigger and bulkier. But remember, this has more than doubled the power of this uh, 65 watt adapter and more than four times the power or output of this charger here. So why would you even need such a powerful adapter? First, if you have a device that supports up to 140 watts of charging, then you're golden. The newer 16 inch MacBook Pros are such devices if you use the USB-C to MagSafe cable. Now this is why Apple sells a 140 watt adapter. But most of us don't even have a device that can charge that fast. Even the 14 inch MacBook Pro maxes out at around 100 watts. Now I have the M1 MacBook Air, which came with a 30 watt adapter, but that MacBook Air can charge even faster than that. So something having an adapter like this ensures me that I'm going to always be charging at the fastest possible speed if the device allows it and the OS allows it. So I was using a battery app called battery health too. And I sh it showed that I was maxing out at around 42 watts of charging on my M1 MacBook Air. But another reason why you would want an adapter like this is to power and charge mul multiple devices at once and charge all those devices at their maximum speed simultaneously. So for example, on the 65 watt charger, if you use both of these ports, USB-C ports here, it drops it down to 45 watts and 18 watts. With the VoltMe, it can charge up to 65 watts on both ports simultaneously. And the last reason I would say is this really future-proofs you for future devices that are able to charge faster and faster. Now, when you do get those devices, it's good to know that you have a power adapter that will be able to match those faster charging speeds. And there is one thing that I'll note and something to look out for is the potential charging speed not only depends on the device and the adapter itself, but it also depends on the cable that's delivering that power. Now, not all cables are created equal. For example, this Amazon Basics USB-C cable has an output up to 60 watts only. So in testing out this VoltMe adapter, I went out and got this cable here, which rated at 240 watts of output. Uh, eventually, I'm gonna do a video on the USB-C connector and the standard and how it can be really confusing. Which brings me to the only thing that I really don't like about this adapter. You could say it's a little bit too bulky, but it's really not for what you get. But the only thing that I don't really like is about this adapter is how it handles when new things are plugged into it. So let me explain. 
And I realized that this won't be an issue for 99% of you. And most of the time it's not an issue for me. But when you do have something plugged into it already, then you add a second device to the adapter. The adapter re readjusts the power and it redistributes the power. Now, when it does it, it kind of resets itself for maybe about a half a second and then it stops charging, but then it starts charging up again. Now, again, this is something that's not going to be uh, an issue for most of you. And for most of the time, it's not an issue because it just, it just starts recharging again. But let's say you have a device that doesn't have a battery and requires it to have constant power. This could be an issue for you. So I have my laptop plugged in via USB-C into the main port. And I'm going to plug something else into there, which is my power station here. It can charge via AC or Type-C as well. So let's see what happens when I plug this in. I'm going to plug it in. Three, two, one. Plugged in. And you see how it flashed there? It turned off for about a half a second and turned back on. Not a big deal, but I'm going to show you the scenario that this is an issue. Okay, so I have my laptop plugged in there. Now I have my GoPro plugged in here, and you can see it says no battery. And the reason why I do this is because if I have the battery in here, this will get very hot because it's constantly charging and discharging the battery inside the GoPro. So if I don't have the battery and only power it by the USB-C, this runs a lot cooler. But what happens when this gets accidentally unplugged or I need to switch around and move this camera a little or this laptop a little bit. Let's see, I'm going to unplug the laptop. Three, two, one. And then the GoPro turns off. Now to prove that, okay, let's see. You can see that the cable's off here. It's not charging. But to prove that it, there's still power going in here, I can turn it back on and we're ready to go. Now I have to, if I plug this back in right here, we'll see that the GoPro turned off. And now I have to turn it back on. And sometimes I have to wait for the mode to come back on to see. Okay, let's do it again. And if I'm using this for a live stream or on Zoom via capture card, the camera will temporarily come off and I have to physically come back here and turn it back on, which can be very annoying. And then I wanted to point out that this issue is not unique to the VoltMe. It's also happening with these cheaper 65 watt chargers that I reviewed before. Again, it's not a big issue, but it's something I wanted to point out. Other than that minor issue, I'm really liking this power adapter. Now, would I recommend this adapter? Well, it really depends on what you're trying to power up. If you know you're gonna need more juice, with let's say you have a 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro, I would definitely recommend getting this. Now save your money and don't buy the overpriced, oversized Apple power adapters. Even the ones by Anchor are a little bit more expensive and some of them have less ports. Now if you want something that will future-proof you for future devices, I would recommend getting this as well. But if you don't require that much power and you want something a little bit more compact, then I would still recommend getting one of those cheaper power adapters that I reviewed before. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, consider subscribing. Till the next one, see ya.